Hey everybody, hope everybody's well. Today on the channel, we are going to review the new HFMC album, also known as the Hase Forberg Music Companion, and their new album, Eternal Snapshots. And now it breaks my heart to see where it led. All right, let's go by saying this is a wonderful Swedish band that was formed in 2008. Out of an idea by Flower King singer and guitarist Hasse Froberg. The idea started to take shape, and in 2009, HFMC started to play and prepared for what would later become their debut album, Future Past. HFMC also consists of Sampo Axelson on bass guitar, Shell Haraldson on keyboards, Anti Lanzo on guitar, and Ola Strandberg on drums. And they have over the years been members and playing with groups and names such as Glenn Hughes, Mikhail Schenker, Jeff Scott Soto, and Joe Lynn Turner, amongst others. HFMC has a warm and unique sound of their own with an influence from progressive rock, classic rock, and even a hint of pop. That would be probably the best description I could give on their style of music. So 2024 would mark the 40-year anniversary since Hase released his first album. What can be better to celebrate 40 years as a recording artist than to release a new one, right? The new HFMC record, Eternal Snapshots, is the band's sixth studio album. Uh, the album is a, a, a loose concept album that deals with questions such as how do we become who we are? You know, is everything predetermined? Is destiny involved in our lives? You could say the title Eternal Snapshots refers and reflects over the fact that new fate of lives are being born every second. There's just something immediately recognizable about Hase's vocals, you know, and I think that's probably due to the fact that I'm also a big fan of the Flower Kings. I'm not sure about his vocal delivery is pretty unique and perfectly suited for the music. And in Anton Leinzau, he has a superlative guitarist who can turn his hand to pretty much any genre he wants. In Sampo Axelson and Ola Strangberg, a rhythm section as sharp and cool as they come. What they have created is a masterful collection of brilliant, catchy songs that flow superbly and make a wonderful cohesive album of progressive tinged hard rock that even some might say would have some poppy moments. It's a record that makes you smile, tap your feet, sing along to, and just enjoy the love of music that I think everybody shares. This is a good album that you could play while you had friends over or company over. It's, it's a positive sounding record and I think we need that these days. All right, let's get into the music. The opening track is a song called All I Wanted to Be, Part 1. And this has a big build-up with some solid guitar and some dexterous keyboards before it flies off with some thunderous drums, excellent bass playing, conducting the journey. Hase, <clears throat> Hase's almost plaintive vocal that joins in as the foot comes out of the accelerator, giving the song a more purposeful feel, and then it sags perfectly into the upbeat and uplifting vibe of the next song called Deserve to be Happy. Now, this is a track that really showcases the music with a sunny disposition. A somewhat earnest vocal and subdued music opens the song before it blossoms into something quite remarkable, I would say. Then following that, we have a song called Wherever You May Go. And this adds a quieter, inspiring feel to the album as the subdued acoustic guitar opens the track and Hase's poignant vocal begins. It is a beautiful song and one that just bleeds emotion, especially on the delightful chorus. It is a song that just stays in your head for a long time, very much so. It invokes some memories. They're almost melancholy, but the music is just as so spiritual that the feeling never lasts for long. Anton's fabulous guitar work and Shell's Hammond organ are touches of absolute genius, an outstanding piece of music indeed, and one of the highlights of the album. After Wherever You May Go is a song called No Messiah. Uh, this song has got a great 80s vibe, and 
a lot of soaring keyboards, fiery guitar, and a thunderous rhythm section that really gets under your skin and drags you along in this emotive journey. Next, we have a song called Once in a Lifetime. And this is a journey back in time that has a tremendous 80s rock feel to it. Powerful and very reflective at the same time. You wouldn't be uh, too far out if you said that you could hear this perhaps on a Fernie or say a Journey album. It's really got that tinge to it. Coming next up on the album, we have what I'm going to call two short little interludes, being only for me and the yard. The former having a feel of sunny shores and glimmering ripples in a clear, calm water. And the later could have come straight from a Spock Speared release, and despite being under two minutes long, it's possibly, no it is, I'm going to say the most progress track on the album. The excellent songwriting continues with Searching for the Dark, which really feels like a classic Crosby, Stills, Nash song, kind of combined with Yes, with its gorgeous vocals and heavenly music that just kind of floats suggestively in your psyche. The guitar is especially divine and helps make this encouraging track very recommendable and remarkable. All right, then we have a song called A Sorrowful Mariner. And this song is um, very choral feeling. It has a lot of church organs, a lot of heavenly voices. And you have to appreciate that occasionally a band decides to do something quite left field from the other songs on the album. That is one of the highlights to me of any album, whether it's prog or country or rock. When they do throw in a track that necessarily doesn't fit with the rest of them, but in a way it does, and it's maybe a good thing that it is there. Then we have the utterly sublime, my favorite song on the album called Blind Dog, which is a brilliant hard rocking song that you could say wouldn't be out of place on a Led Zeppelin album, for example. I get the impression that everyone is having the time of their lives on this fiery, thunderous bass playing primeval drums and Hammond organ to die for. Anton gets to cut loose and boy, does he ever cut loose. Delivering a classic lesson in classic rock guitar playing and second to none, add in Hassi's dynamic ardent vocals and you have just an awesome slice of rock music. Then the album comes full circle as it closes with the refrain of All I Want to Be Part Two, which is good. It was more of a reprise of the first album, so I'm not going to really get into detail. Um, it's a nice way to bookend the album. It really works in that sense. So as a final thought on the album, I'm going to have to say that music is definitely written to connect people to move you in an emotional, spiritual way, and an intellectual level between each other, and even for your personal self. It is done right here and leaves you in a much better place than you listen to with the first note with Eternal Snapshots. Asi Forberg and company have delivered one of the more musical special events of the year so far, and uh, this album is generally just a great album. There's, you know... I'm not going to say there's any real high points, but there's no real low points. It's just consistently good music. And I think if you're a fan of the Flower Kings, um, check the rest of their back catalog out. And uh, they've got some gems in there for sure. Anyways, to give this final rating, I'm going to give it three and a half stars. And I do recommend you taking this up and listening to it. All right, let's have a look at the physical product. I like that album cover. I really do. There is the track listing. Everybody to read. I'll show you the disc if we can get it out here. Select. Like when you open up, picture of the guys, their names. The booklet. The lineup of who plays what, etc. There's lyrics. 
lyrics and some artwork. More credits, and then there's the back. All right, guys, see ya.